Hello there, it's Mr. P. On today's lesson, we're going to take a look at two literary devices. Foreshadowing and flashback. Let's get started. So why foreshadowing and flashback together? Well, they are often taught together because they both refer to a specific time in a story. Foreshadowing refers to the future event in a story. Flashback, instead, refers to the past event in a story. So let's take a look at foreshadowing. It is a literary device in which a writer gives an advanced hint of what is to come later in the story. Foreshadowing often appears at the beginning of a story or a chapter and helps the reader develop expectations about the coming events in a story. There are various ways to create foreshadowing. A writer, for example, may use character dialogues to hint at what may occur in the future. In addition, any event or action in the story may throw a hint to the readers about future events or actions. Even a title of a work or a chapter title can act as a clue that suggests what is going to happen. Foreshadowing in fiction creates an atmosphere of suspense in a story, so that the readers are interested to know more. Foreshadowing in fiction creates an atmosphere of suspense in a story, so that the readers are interested to know more. Function. Generally, foreshadowing is to build anticipation in the minds of readers about what might happen next, thus adding dramatic tension to a story. It is deliberately employed to create suspense in mystery novels, usually by giving false clues or red herrings to distract readers. It can make extraordinary and bizarre events appear credible, as the events are predicted beforehand so that readers are mentally prepared for them. Examples of foreshadowing. The evening was still. Suddenly, a cool breeze started blowing and made a windy night. Foreshadows thunderstorm. The most awful thing happened on a stormy evening. The battle between good and evil started. Foreshadows danger. They thought there wouldn't be more bodies. However, they could not believe the thought. Foreshadows murder. Now let's take a look at an example in The Giver. Jonas gives little hints throughout the novel. His fate will be very clear before finishing the book. Let's take a look at some of them. Jonas saw the house with all the Christmas lights in the first memory The Giver gave to him. Thus, this foreshadows the end of the story. Jonas says to Gabriel that there will soon be joy happiness and love. Thus, that is what happened at the end of the book. Jonas was playing catch with an apple when he noticed that something on the apple had changed. Thus, you know that he is special because Asher didn't see that. Now let's take a look at an example in Romeo and Juliet. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is rich with foreshadowing examples, one of which is the following lines from Act 2, Scene 2. Life were better ended by their hate than death perugate wanting of thy love. In the balcony scene, Juliet is concerned about Romeo's safety as she fears her kinsmen may catch him. Romeo says, in the above lines, that he would rather have her love and die sooner than not obtain her love and die later. Eventually, he gets her love and dies for her love too. Now let's take a look at flashback. Merriam-Webster defines the word flashback as an interruption of the chronological sequence as of a film or literary work of an event of earlier occurrence. 
Flashbacks are interruptions that writers do to insert past events in order to provide background or context to the current events of a narrative. By using flashbacks, writers allow their readers to gain insight into a character's motivations and provide a background to a current conflict. Dream sequences and memories are methods used to present flashbacks. Now let's look at its function. The use of a flashback is to convey to the readers information regarding the character's background and give them an idea of the character's motives for doing certain things later in the story. Therefore, a flashback in the story deepens inner conflict. It provides stimulus for the conflict, deepens the touching effects and allows the readers to sympathize even with a villain. Another function of flashbacks in a narrative is to increase tension. A mere mention of a past event makes readers wish to know the secrets, so they read on to find out what the secret is. So now let's look at an example in The Giver. In Chapter 3, Jonas has a flashback by recalling a time when the speaker announced that no snacks were permitted to be taken from the recreation area and hoarder. Jonas remembers feeling guilty because he took an apple with him and had to apologize to the recreation director the next day. Jonas explains why he took the apple with him out of the recreational area and describes his feelings of bewilderment after witnessing the apple change while playing catch with Asher. Now let's take a look at examples in Romeo and Juliet. The deaths of uh, Romeo and Juliet are the most heavily foreshadowed events in any of Shakespeare's plays. We learn that the lovers will die in the prologue. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventure Pitius overthrows, doth with their death bury their parents' strife. Both lovers announce to Friar Lawrence that they will commit suicide if they cannot be together. Romeo says, Come, death, and welcome. Juliet will said so. So now let's recap. Foreshadowing is the technique of hinting about something that will occur later in the story. Flashback, instead, is an account of the conversation or action that happened before the beginning of the story or at an earlier point. Flashbacks interrupt the chronological order of events. So that's it for today. If you have any questions about this lesson, please post your question below this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. If you liked the lesson, hit on the like button, please and you may share the lesson if you liked it. Until next time, bye-bye.